Folks, welcome back to episode. Are we on 15 or 14? 15. This is 15. Episode 15 of the Armchair Warriors podcast. We are joined by a special guest, Jay Soley. But just kidding. We're joined by a special guest on the interview. No offense, Jason. Um, we have Berkeley Catton on the podcast this week. And my, oh, my, did we have some fun with that one. So we're excited to get you into that one. We're going to do it later in the, into the podcast. So probably around the halfway point, maybe just before then. But we'll put the timestamp in the, the description so you can skip over our dumbness and go. Go watch somebody that's kind of cool, but we're going to fire this one up. Luke, go ahead. Oh, oh, we also didn't even talk about the fact that you moved You moved back home. Oh, yeah. We're doing this yeah. remote. Remote. Yeah. We it are sucks, now, actually. I kind of yeah. hate it. No, it's terrible. But we're now doing this remote for the remainder of the summer. Jace is moving in in a couple weeks, so me and him will be at least be together. But as far as this comes down, it's going to be looking like this for kind of the rest of the summer. And... uh yeah, but we just want forgot to touch on that. I'm really sad Dylan left me here in Calgary, and he went home to make some real money. And well, I'm gonna sit here yeah. in Calgary and hang out by myself. But it is what it is. I'm not not mad or anything. But with that, we'll <laughs> hop into it. I want to chirp Dylan real quick because he really needed those Capitals to not make the playoffs. And boy, Ugh, oh boy, did they boy, ever did clinch they. up! Yeah. So Dylan, how are you feeling about? Uh, that costly bill that's coming your way. Oh, uh, you know, it was it was nothing short of disappointing. Um, just kind of sitting there and watching the the wings tie it. I'm like, hey, the boys are back. Like the boys are back. And then Torch didn't know that the game was tied and they were screwed. And he said, "Full cool, goal, cool. one one." And yeah, I just watched it all unfold and my heart was broken. So congrats hey, been, to I've you. I'm not going to name you. I'm not going to name you because I hate you, but congrats to you. Go ahead, Luke. Um, I don't, bl- a lot of people have been ripping on torts for this decision, but they had to pull the goalie anyways. Like yeah. they had to get a regulation win if they wanted a chance, no matter what happened in the other game. So I didn't really see much yeah. harm in it. A lot of people were chirping them, but I was kind of perfectly fine with it. Plus, I always like to see Dylan lose a bet. But that did bite I hate me. You. I Sorry, hate that, you. That, that that bit me today. I do. I I lost a bet to my dad. Matthews didn't get the seventy. So oh, I, now, right. I oh, now owe him a case of I beer. About that. His his oh. MGDs that he loves so much. Yeah, oh. I, uh, I was kind of heartbroken by that, and I was watching. He had like eight or nine shots today, or more. Jay said he hit a crossbar, so I mean, oh, it, oh, it was did. a dirty play too. <sighs> yeah, it was That's sick. Just, just heartbreaking, really. I think it's kind of sad, but you know, I'll talk. We'll talk about that later. We're gonna talk about uh, the Eastern Conference race first. Oh, Jay's got twelve to say. shots. Twelve shots oh. tonight, actually. Oh my god! <sighs> and he couldn't put one. Couldn't put one no. past him. Couldn't pull the trigger. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. I see how it is, but. Speaking of the East, the East playoffs are locked up for playoff matchups, and we got kind of we got some matinee games happening this weekend, which I'm kind of excited for. Like we got what what is it? I think it's twelve thirty Eastern and three Eastern on Sunday, and we got five Eastern and eight Eastern on Saturday. So out West, that's starting pretty early for us. We got full days of hockey ahead of us, which is nice. And once the West gets set up, it'll be nicer too. But we don't know what's going on with the West. We're gonna talk about the East. First matchup, we're going to talk about, I mean, Florida-Washington. Dylan, you want to talk about the Florida-Washington series that we're about to see? It's Florida. I thought it was Rangers-Washington. Oh, Rangers-Washington. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, My bad. Right. My bad. My bad. If I could pick a team in three games, I would. Washington is going down in less than 12 periods of hockey. God, I'm so frustrated by this. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I think the Caps take a game. Just for what? fun. A game Just of for ca- fun. A game of cards on the plane, maybe? Like they're not winning a hockey game. Hey, I Get watched Ovechkin here. block a shot the other day. Like he's all in. True. He wants he wants to win some games. They had I think thirty. Yeah, they're eating pucks. Shots. Yeah, no, they're eating pucks, actually. I'll give you that. That's true. And that's something that I haven't really seen from a Capitals team in a while. So I mean, 
I like them picking one, but yeah, the Rangers are just going to, I don't know. I hope they just demolish them, but they are the president's trophy winner. So they have to lose at some point because yeah. they're not going to, they're true. not going to win a cup. President's trophy don't win cups. No. Now my, my matchup that I'm really upset about, um, the Boston Toronto one, I really need to, I really want Toronto to get by, but they, I just saw a stat today and I think Toronto hasn't beaten Boston in a playoff series since 1957, maybe. It might have been before their last cup. Oh. Mm. I could be wrong about that. I was, that. That's trusting social media. So, like, that's a that's a big claim to throw out there. But and Poppy's rattled for not getting a seventy. So the boys are screwed. No, they're so screwed. I mean, all my hopes lie in the West, anyways. So we're gonna ride ride that out. But true. I don't know. I like. I don't, I, I just I just hate Toronto in the playoffs. And you know what? I think that's karma for me of the Matthews bet is that I've just hated on Toronto for so long. And when I finally bet on someone on their team, it's going to, it just like, that screws me up. Yeah. That's just bad karma to throw out there. But I got Toronto winning because I need them to win. Anyways, move on to the next, move on to the next one. The battle of Florida alive and well. What do you think, Dom? You got some thoughts. Florida, Florida and seven. You think it goes that far? I think so. I mean, Tampa's not like a super. I don't know. I think they just got a goalie. If they if they have a chance that Florida's going to get goalied, so and the heart winner. Soon yeah, to be heart and winner. the heart winner. Soon Thank to be you. heart winner. I'll agree with you yep, on that. I don't agree on guy. much, but I'm going to agree yep. with you on that. And that's then, my guy. I'm going to take – yeah, I'm taking Florida in six, but I think Tampa actually gives them a run. Like, T- Tampa's just Tampa yeah. Bay. They're the cup-winning guys that, like, mm-hmm. it's the same thing as watching, like, if Pittsburgh squeaked in, you're like, it's Sid. Like, there's always a chance. You just never know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And then the last yeah. matchup that's actually set in the East that we haven't talked about yet is Carolina-New York. And Carolina mm-hmm. just been kind of rolling. Yeah. Like, I, I just I just hate the Islanders, too. I hit a lot of teams. The Isles. Give me Carolina and five in that series. Like maybe yeah. the Isles squeak one out at home. But you want to know the difference in their goal differential this year? I'd love to. It's it's 80. 80. The Carolina Hurricanes are plus 63. New York is minus 17. Wow. No. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Kind of kind of crazy when you think about that. But that's horrible. Yeah. Brutal. That's this was something that Jace brought up. Was uh, oh, never mind. That was wrong. I'm confused. Had a little bit of confusion in my brain. That doesn't happen very often. I'm a pretty smart guy. What can I say? But oh yeah, nothing gets by you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the East matchups are set. Playoffs start on Saturday. It's the best time of the year. I do want. Amen. I do want to touch on the West because that's where that's where our hopes are a little more invested. And your hopes. Hey, your Kings are a playoff team. Your hopes are there. No, the hopes. no, they're not. Your attention. No, is they're there. not. Your attention is there. Yeah. Your True. hopes are not there. No. Um, the only set matchup so far is Winnipeg, Colorado. And I need Winnipeg to knock them off. <laughs> You're so screwed. <laughs> no, I think they do it. They just beat Colorado 7 Cobb the other day. You're screwed. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I see how it is. Don't entertain my, <laughs> my idea of a Canadian team winning. You just wait till you got blue hair on the top of your head, and you're going to be thrilled. Oh, surely. But Cookie monster vibes. Yeah, no kidding. That'd be kind of funny. We should do like a – maybe that's what we should do, Jace. We'll just give him a cookie monster haircut, and then we'll do like a side-by-side, you know, <laughs> and just get him like <laughs> – Oh. I oh, speak all this nasty. trash only to shave my head in May because that's yeah. where all my teams are going to be out. <laughs> you might oh, not even get to May. You might not even get to May long, dude. Oh, God. If I didn't make it to May long, I'd be so heartbroken. That'd, That'd be, be so bad. devastating. I got family pictures that weekend. So oh, no. I, yeah, I, I might get <laughs> murdered. Like, just totally murdered. But other than that, I mean, nothing's really set yet. Do you think – 
the Kings can. Really? I don't think the Kings. No, because we're waiting on the Kings in Vegas to play. But yeah, yes, hey. Yeah, I and Vancouver. About that. Vancouver yeah. could possibly take. I don't really know, but he, like the two having the two wild cards not set yet, we don't really know. Is this Dal- of- Is this Dallas's last game tonight? Yep. So if out? the Blues win, that means Vancouver's the one seed. I'm pretty sure. Or no, Vancouver, Vancouver has one game to play still. Van- yeah. Vancouver has to win to get into the one seed. Is that they they get the tie break? They have the tie break. Oh uh, yeah, I yeah like it's kind of kind of just chaos. I'm really hoping that you know Vancouver doesn't have to play the Kings because they seem to have their number. I'd rather yeah. Vancouver play Nashville. Not that I want to give any credit yeah. to the Kings because they're a terrible, terrible hockey team. They're horrible. The worst. Actually, I don't even. Hate, I'm not gonna hate on them too much. I don't hate their team. I don't hate their team that much. I hate them. No, I dislike I their goaltending. Like their forward core is deep. It. It. Their forward core is deep. I'll give them that. Not many teams have an eight and a half million dollar center on the fourth line. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, some might say that's a management issue, but you know we won't go there today well, because we don't have that we'll much time. There. But <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Anyways, the West isn't set. It should. It all be set Thursday night, well after we post this. So keep an eye out mm-hmm. for that. And those playoffs will start Saturday. I'm excited for like. Oh, I just love playoff hockey. I'm just so excited. Oh, don't even get me started, man. Yeah, but playoff hockey starting, and that means the regular season trophy races are up. Trophies won't be announced for a long time, yeah. but the trophy races are up. And really, there's only one I care about, and that is the Hart Trophy. Yep. Who do you think is going to win? I mean, I know who you want. I know who you got winning. Who do I think is going to win? Well, probably Zach Hyman because he carried a pretty bad Oilers team. So if I were to give it to anybody, it would probably be him. Yeah, uh, I'd say. No, it's, know, Kucherov. Dave- it's Kucherov. It's Kucherov. It's Kucherov. Yeah. It's if it's not eighty six, I've had enough of this league. Yeah, no, I agree. It's got to be it. It just has to be. Like everyone's talking. Oh my God, McDavid's gonna get to hundred assists. McDavid's gonna get to hundred assists. Guess who got a hundred mm-hmm. assists tonight? Crickets, crickets now because the Russian did it. Disgusting. <laughs> and he's got, I think it's fourteen more goals than McDavid. Yeah, come on. Just yeah. kidding. I don't think it's actually that much, but. I mean, Project. like Maybe. he's he's leading he's leading the points race. He's been in on mm-hmm. so many of Tampa's goals. I just yeah, there's yeah. no. I don't think there's a world McDavid wins it. And tough luck for McKinnon. He finally beats McKinnon oh. like Ma- or beats McDavid in a point race, and he just mm-hmm. Russian comes out of nowhere. Yeah, like so unfair. But you know, life's unfair. So better luck next year. <laughs> yep, and. Austin Matthews has locked up the Rocket Richard. Not that it was ever really in question. I'm just really salty nope. that I lost my bet and he didn't get to 70. That being said, what so a goal close, total to finish man. on. What a goal total to finish on. Yeah, really classy. Way to set way to set a good example for the kids, Austin. Goodness. <sighs> 12 like, goals. He's got 12 more goals. Really? Yeah. Damn. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. But... We'll move on to just some rather – that was kind of the main playoff stuff that I want to talk about. we got a bunch of other random stuff that we're going to talk about before we move into a puck doku in the interview. So we'll just kind of hammer through these quick. Um, the Yotes, they're moving. I mean, it's not – we haven't seen the presser yet. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, they are going to – Pay your Salt hotel bills next time. What? Yeah. <laughs> Pay your hotel bills next time, boys. Oh, I mean – Fun while last time. I wish Arizona would like like I just want them to be there because like it's it's not a great hockey market but like air, having hockey in Arizona is cool but like yeah we've seen this coming from a mile away they've been an absolute nightmare they don't make money it's no. it's a total gong show so yeah no it's uh what a, it's a mediocre franchise and like mm-hmm. it's something had to change I mean. That been tried and tried and tried, and it didn't work and didn't work and didn't work again. But there was one piece of information that I found kind of interesting. 
is that Shane Doan played one season yeah. with Winnipeg before they moved to Arizona. And now Josh Doan, although he didn't play a full season, played a couple games with Arizona. Is I think he's in the lineup for their final game in Arizona, and now he's going to move to Utah after kind of his first couple games, their first hot taste of the regular season, which I thought was kind of cool. It'd be kind of cool to see him have a career arc like his dad, but that's be pretty ridiculous. He's pretty insane. Poor guy's never going to win a damn thing. <laughs> Not in that organization. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sorry, Josh. I'm kidding. Yeah. But other debuts around the league, Lane Hudson made his during the last week, and he looks disgusting. So good. He's a left-handed Gail McCarr. Yeah, he was – like, I watched him – I don't know if – I think it was his first assist, but was that his first assist when he just danced the blue line? Yep. Yeah. That was just beautiful. And then you get – yeah, he's just going to be awesome. I mean, tough look on the Kings when they pick Jack Hughes with the pick right after, I think. But – no, the pick right after. before, sorry. Right before, right before. The pick right before Lane Hudson. Not great by the I Kings team. I didn't know team. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So you've now ruined my evening. evening. You know, that's always my goal when I come on here is to just kind of like, you know, anger down a little bit about Kings. That's kind of kind of the main I point understand. of what I do. That's cool. I'll, I'll wear it. Um, some other very cool um, debuts, I guess. They um, Jackson Blake, Bradley Nadeau, and Gavin Brindley. Um, Blake and Nadeau with Carolina and Brindley with Columbus all made their NHL debuts in the, in the same game when Carolina played Columbus. Those three were all dominant at the college level. All got their contracts, are all now playing, not going back to college. Hopefully, we see them do well. I mean, I don't Good. know. Uh, Gavin, Go ahead. Gavin Brindley rocks. Jackson also, Blake is also awesome. And Bradley Nadeau so is nasty. Hold on. Did we not mention the coolest name in hockey? No. Luca Del Belbaluz. Welcome to the show. I saw that. He was also... And he scored. Uncle. Yeah, he scored early. He was playing with Brindley too, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I think they are playing on the same line together. And yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's a pretty cool name to have coming into the show and make your debut. And I mean, tough to have to debut in the same game as all of these guys, but... I mean, well, he's the only I mean, one who scored. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming. Jeez. <laughs> Guy rocks. Yeah. No, that's pretty sick. I really hope Bradley Nadeau comes back and plays World Jays next year, though. Canada's going to f- need him. Oh, big time. Because he's But the 0-5 group is sick. The 0-5 group is sick, but, like, I really want to win. Another, I don't know. I really want to win. I'm not sure. I think he is because I think he's eligible uh, next year. Okay. But I want to see them win, and I think he would help that out. I mean, we always lose guys to the NHL, and that's just the way it works. But not that I'm sad about it. It's the way the world. I want to watch the world. give him a chance. Yeah, I just want to see him win. I just want to see him win. Just once. Enough with these young bucks. Time to go to the old guys. Um, Jakob Silverberg Uh. has retired from the NHL. A very... Very heart wrenching career for him, getting playing for just two terrible teams his entire career. Who was he? What team was he on before? I can't remember who he was on before. I actually looked. I, I looked this up the other oh. day. Jason, you want to fact check while we talk about Jeff Carter retiring? You, you just knew he was on, on two it. teams. I'm already on it, boys. Yeah. Oh, Anyways, wow. good job, Jules. Kind of slipped that in there. Jeff Carter, Kings legend, is retiring. Winner. Yeah. Confirmed Ottawa it today. Two seasons. What? Ottawa Sens for two seasons. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna say. Tough. I was pretty sure it's Sens. That's just hard. Like poor guy. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah. As much as they're my team. <laughs> yeah. I try to say that they're my team. I can't really cheer for him, and then there's bad. But, anyways, he's retiring. He had a pretty good career, though. He was. I mean, like whenever you think of the, like he was one of those staples on the Ducks for the last couple of years while they were going through for, their mediocrity. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Just you just think of him as a duck, and he's fine. He's retiring, and I thought he was younger than he was, but he's he's been in the league for a while. Yeah, no, he's been around for a bit. He's been around the block. Yeah, yeah, he's been around for a minute. But congrats to him on one heck of a career. And Jeff Carter, 
congratulations on one heck of a career because he had one heck of a career. Winner. Winner. Natural born winner. And then, last little bit of retiring news before we hop into Puck Doku. Jack Edwards is retiring. I think, uh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Not much to say good, about that. Good job, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Great career, um, for, Jack. For people who don't know, he was the he was the Bruins guy, right? Yeah, he was on Nesson forever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. now he's, uh, he's retiring and... I mean, not to say it's overdue because we don't want to rip someone like that, but <laughs> might be, might, new be a smid, might be a smidge overdue. That's okay. <laughs> he'll, he'll never hear this. <laughs> uh, but with that, we're going to do a little, little game of Puck Doku. If you haven't seen it before, it's the we're, me and Dylan are playing Puck Doku Tic-Tac-Toe. Jace has made up a little oh, board boy. for us. And we're going to go back and forth, shot for shot, trying to name players, and we're trying to fill out a tic-tac-toe board. And I'm hoping that this records oh. this. And if not, I'm going to have to do some graphic editing. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to have to put you to the test. I know. Boys can see that. Okay. Oh, my. Oh, okay. It's kind of fun. And I, yeah, and I'll, I'll just edit it on, on here. So just toss me it, and I think you'll be able okay. to see my markings. Okay, sounds okay, good. Let's cool. see, Dylan, I got uh, – Jace, pick a number between 1 and 10. Give me the – No, don't tell us. Num- We're going <laughs> to – Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Locked in. I got it. Okay. Give me number 7. Dylan? Damn, yeah, I was going to say 8, and I'm still it sticking with 8. So give me... yeah. It's always oh. 7. <laughs> it's always 7. Damn. Anyways, um, I was going to explain a little bit. We got a puck doku board, which is just like a three by three square. You got to fill out. You got three across the top, three along the bottom. If you're on YouTube, you'll see this, but I'm explaining for the, the truck listeners. And that's you'll, uh, the San Jose Sharks, Montreal Canadiens, a Colorado Avalanche are along the top, Tampa Bay Lightning, a first round draft pick and drafted late, drafted in the second round or later or along the left side. So you just kind of got to match it up. Kind of a tough one for the, the people listening on Apple Music or Spotify, but we're going to play it anyways because we really enjoy it and it's fun on YouTube. Um, Dylan, since I got to pick the number first. Oh, yeah. wait, I get to go first. I forgot that yeah, was you dummy. I, was gonna, I, was, I, thought we were, <laughs> I thought I just won. I was like, yes, add it to the tally. Of me just beating Dylan and everything. Oh, boy. Shut up. I am one of them, Puck Doku. Sorry. Anyways. Um, yep. I got we're to control do the circles? middle of the board. Circles and squares. So you, okay. Either of you can okay. choose. C- circles goes first. I'm um, circles. Right. Okay. I mean, I got to control the middle. So I'm going to go like Yurav Slavkovsky, drafted round one, Montreal Canadiens. Bang, all right. Okay. 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 I have no clue. Um, let's go... Lane Hudson drafted round two plus. Bang! There you go. All right. Okay. Who do Light I work. How do I set myself up here so I can just? Oh, I, I know where I'm going. Oh no, I don't. Yeah, I do. Colorado Avalanche and Tampa Bay Lightning. Give me Jonathan Druen. All righty. I was kind of hoping <laughs> that's what. Oh, God. Oh, no. I set up this. Bo- oh, no. I didn't set myself up well. Two plus. Can I? I mean, Joe Pavelski had to have been a late pick. Give me Joe Pavelski. Yeah, that was exactly where I was going with it. Yeah. Okay. Drafted round two. Oh no! I did not. I I, I did not play this well at all. Yeah, ra- round seven to be exact. Yeah, I was gonna say he's notoriously oh, late as a pick. Then you look. Oh frick! Abs round two. Let me let me ponder for a second. Oh no! Where was Shark he picked? Dog. Um. Do they have to wait? Wait. Do they have to be drafted by that team, or is it like 
play for them and draft. I'd later. assume so. I honestly wouldn't think so. I feel like it would have to say drafted by said team. I think it yeah. currently playing would work, and they're drafted by a different team. All right. No, hold on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. This this is uh, commission rules. Jace, go ahead. This is your ruling. Yeah, commish. Uh, go ahead, commish. I'll give it to you. Uh, drafted by any team, but as long as they played for the other team. Give me uh, Philip Grubauer. <laughs> I don't know where he was drafted. I'm a little nervous. I'll hold your spot. And that's just a layup for Dylan. <laughs> yeah, I might know that one. <laughs> he was around four by the Washington Bang. Caps. Bang, okay. Fraud. <laughs> Couldn't even pick an abs pick. <laughs> Fraud. Um... Give me a guy by the name of Gail McCarr. Wow. Fair enough. I mean, you could go through most of that roster, and they're just – I'll take uh... – oh, I'm trying to think of which one would be tougher. Let's go Montreal, Tampa, Mikhail Sergachev. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is this is what I was hoping. Oh wait. Oh no. No, Come no. On. No, no. Come on, I, I did that. Did Don't you see what I just did, Jace? <laughs> did you see what I just did? I could have no. won. Yeah. I could have won on the diagonal and I was not paying attention. <laughs> I knew I played that right. No way. Look, this I lose regardless. Did because if it? even if I blocked even if I block you, you get round one Sharks pick, and I lose. Oh, no. We'll call that a tie. We won't call that a Yeah, that's a tie. Oh, okay. Yeah. We could no, also play. Yeah, no, never mind. But Dylan's got Dylan's to have one here. Mm. Oh, Anthony Duclair. Bang. There you go. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have tied. Well, I guess I gotta get. Are we actually. actually? Are we actually tying? Well, I don't know what else. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. It's tic tac toe. There's ties in tic tac toe all the time. Okay. If you want, we could go to the majority, like majority of squares, but that's kind of unfair for the. I'm good, with, I'm good with a tie. I'm I'm good calling the tie, but I'll go uh, Sharks round one, Jumbo Joe. You couldn't even pick a Sharks pick again. No. <laughs> Seriously? I like, I like Jumbo Joe. He's, he's, just, he's uh, one of my favorites. Anyways, that I um, I think we're calling that a tie. We're going to call that a tie. That puts me I at guess so. 1 0 and 1. Wait, 1 0 and 1? And then Dylan's 1 0. I'm one win, one tie. Dylan's uh, loss in a tie. Yeah. So, tough stuff for Dylan there. But we'll try and include this one a little bit more. I quite enjoy this segment. So, we'll try and have that going a little bit more going forward. And with that, Dylan, it's your turn. Kick us over. Folks, oh my goodness. When I tell you, Berkeley Catton's awesome. Berkeley Catton is awesome. He was, he was super, super great. He's... He's a very, very fun, loving person. So me and Luke really enjoyed talking to him. And I think you guys are going to enjoy listening to him talk. So without further ado, we are going to kick it over to me and Luke chatting with Berkeley Cat. With that and some technical difficulties, because I just can't seem to get the Wi-Fi working, we are joined with a very special guest. We have first overall pick in the 2021 WHL draft, won a Holinka Gretzky gold medal while getting the most points in that tournament, as well, a member of the Spokane Chiefs and a projected early first rounder, Berkeley Catton. Thank you and welcome to the pod. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Now, Luke, do you want to fire this one up or should I should I hop into it here quick? I'll, I'll start with it right now. Yeah, give her. Give her. 
Um, I mean, playoffs didn't end the way you wanted, but you guys didn't get in last year. And what was it like kind of getting a taste of that, playing in the States, playing it in Spokane? Yeah, well, I went up when I was 15 for a bit, and that year we uh, we just squeaked in the playoffs and played Kamloops the first round, actually, and they were absolutely – and uh, pummeled us pretty badly. So <laughs> – that was a, um, you know, that was kind of a tough one. And then, you know, like you said last year, kind of got cut short of the playoffs here. Lots of close games in this series, just, you know, a little bit behind. But, um, yeah, playoffs hockey's a whole different breed. But it was fun to you know, play a really good team of Prince George. This, this year. Yeah, PG was just so unbelievably good. I mean, that's a tough first-round matchup for literally anybody in this league. But I want to talk about the regular season. You exploded points wise. What was the off season like beforehand, and what were you doing within the year to kind of get yourself get yourself ready and get to that next level? Yeah, I think you know, like it seemed like last year. You know, sixteen year old is never easy for anyone. You come in and there's it's a whole different ballpark playing. And some guys are men in the you know. So I was getting to these kind of areas to score last year, but wasn't really putting them home or whatever so i think this offseason i shot so many pucks like built this you know backyard uh, shooting area and i just abused it with pucks so um that i think that helped me out a lot i think just even like my shooting percentage went up quite a bit and you know that just helps everything with you know goals and whatever so i think that would probably be the biggest uh, contributor to that yeah, I mean, I'd say it made a big difference. You've been climbing the draft board this year with the NHL draft coming up. We kind of want to touch on that a little bit. I mean, what's the process been like for you dealing with teams? Yeah, I think, you know, I learned a lot about responsibility this year. Like, you kind of have to get your, your stuff together because you, you, you'll miss interviews or whatever, and that's never good. So, you know, I think a lot about, like, time management and stuff and how important that is. And, you know, when you have to do school and we have to do, you know, when the hockey is. So I think that goal on, you know, as the season went on, it got quite a bit better at that. And, you know, moving forward, I think it'll help me out quite a bit. Now we talk about the draft coming up and obviously all the pressure that comes with the draft beforehand, you went to the top prospects game. Uh, we talked to a few guys that went there, but what was the, the experience like for you and and how did you enjoy getting to meet guys all across Canada? Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, going from Spokane to New Brunswick is not very easy though. Like that. <laughs> they, they, uh, they lost my equipment there and back. So oh I actually, God. yeah. So I actually missed like the first day and a half of the thing. So I was kind of a spectator. <laughs> then got my equipment right before the, all the on ice testing and for the game, luckily, but, you know, like the best guys in all the CHL, right? So lots of top dogs coming and kind of to meet new guys and pretty awesome experience. And on the way back, actually, they lost stuff, like I said, and I we were up all night. Parasac was actually coming to uh, to Spokane as well because we were playing them that, that night, the, the next night after. And so we both lost our stuff completely. We were up all night, had no sleep. Then about we didn't think we were gonna play because we had no equipment. <laughs> the, the equipment was up about two hours before, so we both played as basically zombies on no sleep. Uh, it's pretty oh. fun. But it's a it's a it's a really fun experience though, and you know, um, for guys that are gonna go next year, uh, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's quite the experience to be able to do that. I mean, kind of sounds like a nightmare for you from the the travel side of things, <laughs> but that always gets in the way when you're talking about airports and whatnot. But you kind of yeah. touched on like level of play i want to touch on some of your international play that you've been to and we'll start with the Holinka gretzky cup i mean you were the captain of that team and you led the tournament in points what was the experience like kind of just having the c on your on a hockey canada jersey yeah like you kind of dream it up as a kid and then you get to wear it, you know and on it on tv and international stage it's like it's surreal and i think i think i it was a big challenge, but I wanted to take that challenge on. And I think I, you know, did a good job of that. I'm, you know, probably not the most vocal leader, but I think I'm, you know, kind of a leader by example. And that's kind of what they saw in me. And I think that, you know, the management there kind of, kind of liked that about me. And I, I ran with that and, you know, just, uh, just an unbelievable experience. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And then to go what on. Was, and... 
Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. you go ahead. No, you ju- I no, I jumped the gun. That's on you. You go, you go. Okay. I mean, that's on me. <laughs> then uh, you go on to lead the tournament in points on the way to a gold medal. Like, what was what was that like in the room when you kind of get finally get to the top and you win? Because obviously, there's a ton of pressure being on Team Canada to win. But what's that feeling when you finally get it done? Yeah. Well, first off, that final game was craziest game I've ever played in. I don't know. I'm sure you've talked to some guys. They would have mentioned that. But you know, like, um, insane. Like, I think it was like a four thousand seater. It was in Czech, and we were playing Czech, obviously. So there's is a four thousand seater, and there's five thousand fans in there. And I think I saw like a rocket launcher in one section, and it was like it was insane. Just like, just totally different than North American. It's like. A, you know, the chance and the, you know, I saw fire. It was insane. So just, you know, kind of up against all the odds on that game. So that just added, added to that great experience. And, you know, kind of with that first game, we played Finland and we lost and we weren't supposed to. And, you know, that, that doesn't, you know, everyone was kind of saying this and that, but I think we just kind of grew after that even tighter. And it was, a, it was a great, you know, kind of fairy tale ending, I guess. I'm going to come back to international play, but you talked about um, the atmosphere in Czech. Uh, what's it like going from Canada to the States? Because when we watch, the atmosphere just looks so much different in America. Oh, yeah. The fans, especially, you know, in Spokane, where I'm just on, like, I give them so much credit. They, I think they're the best fans in our league, honestly. Like, it, if we're up, uh, you know, one time we were playing, uh, and I think they were winning by 10 goals, and I scored on the power play five minutes left. And it, you would have thought it was, you know, an overtime winner. Like, that's just how awesome they are. So, you know, they, uh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. And, you know, I really, I really care about how awesome those fans are down there. Okay. I'm going to go back to international play. You went, as an under underager to U 18s last year, what was that experience like being essentially younger than the rest of the group? Yeah. You know, I think kind of coming into that tournament, I wasn't, you know, necessarily looked at as one of the top guys on the team. So I kind of had more of a, a depth role, I think. And I, I kind of took more defensive kind of sound and I, you know, just a little bit different, but, Again, lots of guys, you know, that were that are better than me that I got to learn from, and you know that was um, that was really cool. And then, yeah, uh, that was a really cool experience. Uh, unfortunately, didn't win that one, but yeah, no, that that's a tough one too. And a lot of the CHL guys are still in the playoffs and whatnot, and USA is sending their top team that they have. But um, this year. Obviously, you would have been one of the best guys on that team this year, but you're not going. You want to talk a little bit about the decision not to go this year? Yeah, well, it's not really much of my decision. I unfortunately played through the playoffs with a little bit of an injury and, you know, battled through that and kind of got some, you know, opinions from people and was decided to, um, you know, kind of not go to that tournament just for my own, you know, health sake. It's I would, like, again, wearing the Canada jersey, going to those terms is the greatest thing ever, but. Um, it's nothing serious, obviously, but, uh, you know, just, just kind of a time, time heals it, but, uh, it, w- it wouldn't have been, you know, pro- probably good for me to go. Yeah. There's no reason to go hurt yourself any more than you need to just by playing a few extra games. So you've already showcased as much as you possibly could this year, just being an absolute stud, but. What I did want to ask you about, and this is one that's been on my mind for a long time. You went to Shattuck. What is it like going to such a prestigious prep school in a sense in the hockey world? It's that's a top notch place. You know, everything you read about it's pretty much true. Like, you know, unfortunately, I, uh, you know, kind of had to leave there a little bit early just with a, you know, a whole bunch of things, but what I loved it. It was, uh, it was, it was really, really cool. And, you know, just looking back, like, I remember, you know, me, Selig Macklin and Cole Iserman waking up at like five <laughs> going in and, uh, you know, going on the ice before school and like stuff like that. And, you know, it's kind of free range, just try and get as good as you can possibly get at hockey. And they, they, they feed into that, which is awesome. So 
made lots of cool memories there and you know that's uh that's an awesome spot yeah dylan's got a huge debate going with me about the kind of most elite academy type schools and he he rides he rides uh shaddock's pretty hard and yeah. I, i'd say i'd have to agree with him just based off even off the three names you like you you're like obviously you and then to have celebrini and i like that's an insane roster of guys that have just rolled through there right oh my god but I am gonna we'll go we'll move to some lighter questions here for a little bit. What's kind of one of your obviously you've had quite a few big wins, but what's one of your favorite hockey memories? Maybe one that isn't so obvious. Hmm. That's a good one. I don't know, like just kind of, you know, our our spring hockey team, uh is we're called Sassy and Huskies and Rogers on that team and you know, Terrence Smith, a whole bunch of guys drafted this year and you know, I just think those little tournaments in, you know, Regina or Winnipeg it seemed like the biggest deal in the world back then. But, you know, now just looking back, I just look at all those memories and, you know, in the hotel and mini six, like that's just the funnest time in hockey, really. It's just so carefree. It's stuff like that. I really look back on a chair. So probably some of those memories. Yeah, those are time with the boys. You don't really forget that when you ever go down that way. But you kind of touched on what your training looks like in the summertime. What are your kind of hobbies looking like to get away from the training in the summer? Yeah. Uh, I act like, you know, I was kind of mentioning some names, but such an unreal group of guys in Saskatoon, like Korchinski, Raj, obviously, uh, you know, Hyder, Yags, all these guys. And there's always super competitive guys, whether we go golfing or spike ball or poker it's like there's always something kind of going on usually usually something with uh competitive nature but um there's always stuff going on i'd say probably the biggest thing is you've heard it's probably a million times but just you know golfing or whatever little 2v2 uh put a little money on it sometimes i think that's always fun now you touch on golfing i'd love to ask what's the handicap looking like in the summer you know i i play at my home course i'm like a like a three or four, then you put me on a new course and maybe I'm like, uh, uh, like maybe more towards 10, 12, you know, but I feel like I've got, I, you know, my course kind of figured out also, I would say with just average, like, uh, eight. Oh, uh, tell me about it. Like I'll, I'll be at home. I'll be like a four or five and then I'll I, go up to like 86. Yeah. Just so brutal. But you touched on the really good Saskatoon group you guys have. Um, who's the funniest guy you've ever been around? Like, whether it be hockey, like, whether you've met through life, just just guys like that. Yeah, so I think Raj is, you know, growing up with him, he's such a funny, he's just a character in any sort of um, environment. You put him in, obviously, in the rink. I've known him lots, but outside, he's a goof, too. Just unreal guy, and then... Um, Sage Weinstein in uh in Spokane. I've known him now for three years, and just yeah, like unbelievable guy. <laughs> a little dumb sometimes, but uh, just an absolute character, and can make pretty much anyone laugh. So those two guys are probably the funniest I've met. Yeah, those guys that are just a little bit of dumb, whether they intend to or not, they always seem to yeah. get a guy laughing, and no, they're pretty funny for sure. Especially Raj, we've had quite our fair share of watching him over the, the last couple of years. Oh boy. But I'm going to steal Dylan's question here. Cause just, just cause I want to, but I, I want to know, <laughs> I want to know what your favorite stick was growing up. Ooh, favorite stick. Sure. The Sherwood EK 15, you know that one? Holy the black one. Now that, that's the stick right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved that stick. I thought I thought it was so clean, and I don't know. I loved it, and then yeah, that would probably be my favorite, the EK fifteen. Well, the boys have given us some good answers with sticks. Like we were getting like that old like silver synergy, the like silver and black one. I'm like, boys, I would like you just been giving some great answers. I've been loving those. Um. I think we got one more, one more on the lighter side. I just had my heart ripped out by the Caps, so I want to ask you, what are you, who are your cup favorites this year, East, West, or whatever? You you could just pick one team you give her. Uh, you know, I think honestly, I like the Rangers. Like 
think they're built pretty yeah. good for the playoffs. Um, yeah. Sneaky going to do some damage. And then, you know, just like Colorado, like, I probably, my top three, like, number one would be Colorado. Number two, yeah. I like the Rangers, maybe a little bit of a dark horse. I don't know. Rangers. Uh, then also Winnipeg, too. Sneaky. Oh, first Canadian team, Luke. How do you feel about that poll? I'm feeling a lot better that someone finally picked one that wasn't just their favorite team. They actually picked a Canadian team that kind of, kind of got a shot. Oh. Yeah, I desperately need one to win. I did have one more kind of quick question here. I mean, I know you guys don't have a ton of time when you go to Vegas for the draft and whatnot, but is there anything that you kind of want to see in Vegas while you're down there that is not hockey related? Yeah. Um, like, I just think the sphere, I know the draft's in it, but yeah. like, or like, just some from videos of it, like, I can't believe they're all sneaking in there. It's going to be sick. I, I'm pretty excited for that part. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm yeah. most excited for coming down there to watch. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's going to be an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the strip's gonna be sick. I mean, Vegas is just a sick spot. So, um, that kind of wraps up my questions. Yeah, the the floor is yours. If you want to, you know, say something that's that's on your mind, you know, it's it's all you. I heard Raj tell that story about Stanko, and that's pretty funny. Eh? Oh my god, oh, I was dying yeah. laughing. <laughs> that, <laughs> the, worst, I, the best part was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, I, like, just, I, like, kind of similar story, like, um, we were, last year when they loaded up Kamloops, we, uh, we, you know, we're playing them or whatever, and Zellweger was on that team, they were absolutely stacked, and um, I yeah. remember, I, uh, I Zell, Zellweger was on the blue line, and ripped one into my shin pad somehow. Like, probably the first time I've ever seen him do it. I'm like, okay, I got a breakaway. I'm going for the breakaway. And, you know, I just think I have a breakaway. And Zellweger just starts skating backwards and just plays me as a one-on-one. It was, it was the craziest thing I've ever in my life. That was kind of like my, oh, my God, this guy's unbelievable. So, you know, kind of similar. Funny one playing Cam Loops as Raj. And when you play that many top dogs, something like that's going to happen. Pretty funny. Yeah, you you're due for the old welcome yeah. to the WHL moment. Hey, yeah, oh yeah, completely. <laughs> That's awesome, Luke. You're good on your end, hey. Yep. Yeah, I'm perfectly good. All right, All guys, right, folks. Thanks. Folks, that was the young man, Mr. Berkeley Catton, and like I said prior. What a fantastic young gentleman he is. Whoever gets that kid in the draft, um, you got a stud, first yeah. and foremost. And you got a pretty good human being. And pretty good is an understatement. He's a fantastic human being. So um, we are very grateful that he decided to take some time out of his day to talk to two dummies like ourselves. Um, but it was, it was really awesome, and we're going to have to set something up where we – we get to talk to him in person, maybe maybe see him at the draft. But with that being said, we what, what should we segue into here? Should we talk about the playoffs? Should we talk about women world, women's worlds? Maybe the career path game where we normally go after an interview. Oh, yeah, sorry. Punk Doku really took my mind away. That's my bad. Yeah, we're going to bounce into – So, Jace, if you just – Oh, yeah, Jace, Jace has, if you want to go – Okay, we're good? Okay, cool, because yeah. I'm not prepared. Yeah, no, we're going back to the career path game. We got our producer today, so he is going to um, present those on the screen. We'll read them off for the people listening, and, yeah, we'll get started with the career path game. Go ahead, Jace. Who's oh, going who's first? this for? Oh, who? yeah, Dylan, who, who wants to go first? Well, you went first last time, so I'll go first this time. Works for me. Just Whenever you're ready, you, Jace. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Hey, it's that country Wi-Fi out there, man. It, uh... No, I'm just bugging. Hey, now. I'm just bugging. Your Wi-Fi has been surprisingly good. Not to, wow. not to disrespect the country Am Wi-Fi. I going to see it? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll read it off while Dylan's looking at it. We've got 2008 
to 2011. Steve Columbus Mason. Blue Jackets. Steve Mason. No. Damn it. <laughs> Anyways, 2008 to 2011, the Columbus Blue oh, Jackets. This is Two- so th- not a goalie, my bad. <laughs> 2011 to 2021 with the Philadelphia Flyers. 2021 to 23 with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And this year, I'm assuming the contract was under Arizona and did not play. For the people this that can looks see like more check. This looks like huh? more check. Because it might be more check. It is. Yeah. His point totals are good. way lower than I thought. I thought he was no. Well, no, he had eighty-five. No, those are reasonable numbers. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. I figured yeah. the Columbus to Columbus would kind of. Jace, you have no idea how bad I'm going to take advantage of these point numbers. The Yotes thing was like a what, and then I'm like, oh, cap dump. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we do, King Dylan. Leader okay, off. Luke. Don't, don't guess, because I, I cut you off, so I'm going to read these, okay? Yep. Yeah, I so, know. So, in 2012-13, we'll he... I'm, I know who exactly who this is. In 2012-13, he started his career with the Kings, 13-14, went back to Manchester, and then started his full-time NHL career in 13-14, where he played with the Kings until 18-19, and then midway through that year went to the, the Pens, and then midway, and then through through the year again, he went to the Canucks. So he was on three teams in one year, and then with the Canucks all the way until twenty two, twenty three, and currently in the year twenty twenty four, he is on the Montreal Canadiens. I want to. I'm fairly confident, but I want to give the people some time. <clears throat> okay. I got, okay. I got a guess. Take your victory I, lap. Yeah, I just. Well, no, this ain't a victory. Okay. All right. Overtime, right? Three points, three point system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this Tanner Pearson? It is Tanner Pearson. Yep. Okay. I wanted to okay. be nice to you guys this week. I oh, appreciate that, that actually. I enjoyed that actually. This game's Don't a whole hell chance. of a lot more fun when you win. <laughs> All right. Okay. You Jace, you want to come on. up with an overtime I mean, guy? I yeah, you can talk about the next stuff. I okay. I have a guy in mind okay. already. I actually just screenshot it. Okay. Okay. While Jace does that, he's going to give us a couple minutes because I want to talk about something big that we haven't touched on yet, but I can't believe we haven't touched on it. Don't go ahead. Oh, we of course, we're talking about the women's world here. Are you kidding me? Dan is back. That game was electric. Do you watch that game? Oh. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, that game was insane. Turned it on. Sitting there and just back and forth and back. I'm like, oh my god, Canada's going to win. Oh my god, we're down. Oh my god, we're back. Just all over the map. What did the final score was six five? Six five. Well, actually, hold on. I should. I, I'm not going to say I sat down and watched the whole thing because I was. I was swinging. I was swinging the golf club around. Okay, I'm going to take full accountability for that. I was swinging the stick, but the third. I watched the third, and I watched overtime because, of course. But yeah, that game was bananas. I didn't watch much more than you. The Masters was wrapping up. Yeah. So masters and then jumped right over, but it was perfect timing because I still saw like eight goals. It was insane. Yeah. No, that game was uh, so much bananas. fun to watch. Canada's back on top. Yeah. yeah, it was it was impressive. I mean, just clutch. I, there, how, about, I mean, how about Captain Canada? Yeah, I was gonna say your your goat, your goat of women's hockey. My goat. Just I'm slowly like the more she plays, the more I'm just losing this argument. Isn't she so good, dude? Yeah, it's impressive. Like I, it's She's I try so and sit there and be like, like I'm like, Haley Wiganizer was awesome, and she was really awesome. But like, yeah. damn, does she just keep she, winning? On, on the power play, when the states had too many men, <laughs> they went cross box, and she went one timer seven feet wide. I'm like, that was so rock star overtime hat trick game winner. I'm like, you're the best. Oh, uh, she's awesome. She kicks so much ass. Yeah. No, that was awesome. Can't believe we forgot to touch on that. That was electric. We were just the group chat was going crazy during that game, just back and forth yeah. the whole time. And no, it was really fun and good to see Canada back on top and get a win at some point yeah. internationally this year. The two dub is gonna resume here too, pretty quick. And we're getting yeah. into playoffs. So when do those playoffs start? I don't know the exact date, actually. We'll have to figure that out. We'll uh, we'll we'll come back next week and figure something out. 
yeah, once it kind of gets back into the swing and we're getting ready to ready yeah. and ramped up. But I think Jace has our player. Yeah. All right, Jace. Right. How do we okay, want to do shot you, for shot here, right? Shot for shot. So are yeah. we flipping? Or who who's gets first shot? Well, just go. If you see it, just okay. it. All right. And then shot for shot after. Yeah, yeah sure. Who? Oh, my. No fair. He got two Ontario guesses. Ontario Rain. Oh, my goodness. Okay, sorry. Guess, we should read this what? off. Hey, someone read the uh, – don't, don't guess. I'm going to read this off. Okay, people. sorry. All right. So, from 20, 2013 to oh. 2015, he's with the Los Angeles Kings. And then from 2015 to 2021, he was with the San Jose Sharks. And then in 21-22, he stayed with the Philadelphia Flyers. And then was dealt to the Kraken. For twenty two, twenty three, and he is currently on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jake McCabe. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh Jake oh. McCabe. Right, what's his first name? Oh. I got bleep. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> what's McCabe's first name? Kings to Shows. Okay, Dom. It's your guest, buddy. I'm, I know. I just I can't think of one right now. That I wanted to do this one initially. Wild. I was gonna give Dylan him because he's a Los Angeles King. Yeah, this is cruel. Yeah, this, this is, is a is, cruel one. This is funky. Okay, be pissed. Over time, you... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Sorry. If, Luke, if you have a guess, like go. Like I'm, I'm good if you just go. Um. From Seattle last year, oh my God, is it Seattle's backup from last year? Oh, Martin Jones. Yeah. Bang bang, let's get you some. I didn't oh, know I, he was a flyer. I almost said Steve Mason just because you said that, and I didn't think you'd get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I probably wouldn't have. Oh, uh, right. Dylan takes I a win. Know he was, I didn't know he played for the Hitman. That's cool. Yeah. No, I didn't know that either. So, yeah. That's kind of interesting. I cropped out the stats so you didn't know he was a goalie this time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah keep, do, keep doing that in the future. Mason, keep, even keep though crap. he still said goalie. Yeah. If, if goalie I seen the goalie stats, yeah, if I seen the goalie stats, I would have probably got that pretty quick. Yeah. No, keep cropping the stats out. We tip, Yeah, we'll uh, leave that be outside. And But uh, Dylan moves. Yeah. Is that 8-6? Yeah, that's I'm 14. Back. That's 14. That's 8-6. Dylan is within two. But uh, that's as close as it's going to get. I'm bouncing back next week. Right. We're going to try anyways. I got that. You know, I'm going to bounce back. I'm, we'll be okay. Be but, dog. Anyways, Dylan won. Womp womp. We'll move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, NCAA news. I mean, two big pieces kind of here. Denver wins the national championship over just a stacked BC team. Oh, I mean, that Denver goalie stood on his head. Holy smokes. I don't remember his name. JC, I think you do, right? Uh, you're going to put me on the spot, and my eyes blank. But I do know what you're talking about. <laughs> goalie guy. It? Well done, Jace. Yeah. Fact checker. I don't know Jace said he knew him. Fact checker, but yes, that goalie was unbelievable. And He's that crazy lights out, bro. To hold BC to a shutout in a national championship with the talent that they have on that team is insane. I think they hit Shout a fair bit of iron, but yeah. that being said, that happens anyways. They still got to find a way to put pucks in the back of the net, and they didn't. But Denver is national champions again. And well, you find a name, Jace? Yeah, it's Matty Davis. That's my bad. <laughs> Come on, man. Resident goalie expert. Alberta boy. Alberta oh, boy, yeah. too. I think oh, he followed yeah. me on goalie, Instagram man. at one point. No. Oh. <laughs> not that not to throw in a subtle flex. It'd be nice if we could get him on the pod, yeah, maybe. Sick, Jace. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Jace, there's some strings, dude. Yeah, get her done, man. I'm pulling. Put I'm your pulling. network into work. AJ, then we go. AJ's on top. Or was on top. Was on top. <laughs> Was on top. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of junior coverage to cover over the next little bit. But before we go there, we're going to cover some WHL stuff here in the next little bit. But 
the Hobie Baker winner is now Macklin Celebrini. He did it. He won as a underage. As, do we even call him a true freshman? He's an underage freshman. He's supposed to be in grade 12. He's right? an underage. Yeah, he's not true. Nothing true about that freshman. <laughs> but he no, wins. He's, the, he's yeah, he joins an elite in list. Oh, my gosh. Dude, that, that kid blows my mind every time I watch him play hockey. He's so yeah. good. He's gonna be fun to watch. Where do you think he goes? Who who gets the odds? Which way does the does it tilt? He's going to the bay. He's going to the bay. Going Sadly, home. he's gonna be in the Pacific. You hate to see it. The sharks come back, and yeah, the Kings are just gonna be stuck in that Pacific. I mean, we might have to see a division realignment though. So maybe doesn't some things matter. change. Still, doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter for the Kings. But maybe no. like McDavid moves on. You know. Oh, oh dude. Like a little. Like a little. Wow, huh? Jeff's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be unbelievable. Yeah. Doesn't but, matter. He's going to Toronto anyways after the season. No, no, no. I would be so <laughs> devastated on so many levels. Well, then we could just keep calling him a merchant because, you know, he's just an assist merchant. Like, he gets put with elite goal scorers yeah. like Zach Hyman, and then it'd be Austin Matthews yes. next, right? Like, that's just. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Guy's a fraud. Yep. McDavid, a fraud. Just kidding. Don't come after us. We love you. You're awesome. But we'll move away Who's from. We? Yeah. Dylan's is more of like a love hate relationship. As soon as he puts on a Team Canada jersey, Dylan's going to love him. But <laughs> until then. Oh, yep. Yeah. 100%. Until then, not so. No. Nope. WHL. That's where I was going next. Sorry. Losing my, losing my brain. Sorry. Long days. WHL playoffs are second rounds almost wrapping up. I believe Saskatoon just clinched over Red Deer. Seven zip. Yeah, clean clean sweep. They won seven Cobb. Cool. I mean, shout out hey. though. Yeah, so Gardner Shuddy. Mm. On the pod. Did he like start Gardner. today? I don't even know. I doubt it. I bet you he didn't even start no. today. I bet you they gave him the day off. Wait a fact check, dude. Nope, he played. Great he, was. He, was, he was the second star oh. of the game. Get out of here. I know what I'm w. talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And then we go um, – also want to shout out other podcast guest, Callum Brigley, for scoring one of the nastiest shorthanded goals oh. I've ever seen oh my last night. God. Yeah, yeah, so we're recording this. That was in game three. He's shorthanded, picks up the puck, coming down the wall, and I thought he had nothing. And he goes, spinorama, upstairs. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. That's pretty nice. But, oh, you're good at hockey. Yeah. Pretty pretty darn good. He's been rolling as of late. I mean, tough to see mm-hmm. see Red Deer get eliminated here, but that yeah. uh, he he has been rolling and he he's had a really strong second half of the year. So wanted to shout him out shout him out a little bit because yeah. it was pretty impressive. But with that, Saskatoon's eliminated, and Moose nope. Jaw. Nope. nope. No 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 nope. no 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 no. Red Deer's eliminated. <laughs> there you go. Our our rookie goaltender Evan Gardner moves on. Same yeah, of course he does. Done. Yeah, guy's a, guy's a dog. And then Moose Jaw is now up 3-1 on Swift Current. They just won tonight, and there are no games tomorrow, so this will not affect anything. But 3-1, Moose Jaw is up over Swift Current. Kelowna is hanging on right now. They're up 2-0. They're down 2 nothing and going into the third in game four, and this is a, this is a do-or-die situation for them because they are down three gob versus a stacked Prince George team. And then Portland is now up three Cobb on Everett. And those games, the rest of those series take place on Friday. And I believe every single one of them is an elimination game. If yeah. Kelowna makes it that far. If not, you got Moose Jaw with the ability to eliminate Swift Current. And Portland will have the ability to eliminate Everett. And where was my last piece? Oh, Jace informed me today that I didn't know about this when... Easton Armstrong ran into Watsky. I didn't really see the play, but Chase Watsky, the Red Deer goalie, got hurt, and he was on fire. I mean, they're still losing because it's Saskatoon, but he was on fire, and Armstrong was suspended for a considerable amount of time for running into a goalie, and I don't know what the games was. Going to get Jace to check. <laughs> but he was suspended for uh, he was suspended for a while, and I think somewhere in that four to six games range, Possibly the rest of the series. Something scary. Four. Four games. Four games. Yeah. 
So he'll be out for two more after this into the next round. I didn't really see the play, so I'm not going to comment on it because I didn't really see it. But whatever. He's moving out tough. Hopefully Watsky gets healthy before the draft because he is a pretty highly touted goalie. Even Yeah, and he's been playing really good. Sixth. Sixth North American. I thought he was ninth. Dang. I thought Gardner was sixth and Watsky was ninth. Let's no, battle Gardner it out. Let's duke it out. I don't know. I need a, I need a fact check on that. Well, Jace is fact checking. <laughs> um, oh, my God. U18. <laughs> U18 Worlds are starting. In Finland in how many days? Eight days. Starting right away a week, in Finland. A week exactly. Is it? Yeah, no. it is. No. A week not. exactly. What? The 25th is a Friday, dude. Gard- it's Thursday, man. Gardner 7. Oh, I'm sorry. Six. I thought today was the 8th. Is Watsky sixth? Nine. Oh, so Watsky was nine. Gardner was seven. Luke was right, or closer to being right, as per usual. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Back to, back on track. Um, U18s are going on in Finland starting April 25th, which is eight day, seven days from when we release this. You were kind of right, Dylan. Not completely wrong. I won't rip you. But... Guys that we had on, Roger McQueen <laughs> and Charlie Ellick are both over there right now. And no one really knows what's going on with Lindstrom. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone know? If any, you guys haven't heard anything? No. no. So we're we're going to see that, next week. Yeah. Medhat posted that he was going. Team Canada didn't post him on the roster. The last thing I heard was that he wasn't going. But we'll see if he does go. That's going to be a huge pickup for Team Canada because he's nasty. They are they ha, they only listed eleven forwards on their roster, so there's room yeah. for like uh, you know, there's room for an extra forward. But anyways, Canada doesn't normally send their best 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 roster. Like obviously their best available players go, but the CHL is in playoffs right now, so missing a lot of guys like Perak and Dickinson are still in the playoffs and. There's just a ton as you kind of go through the list of guys that are there. But Gavin, I think Gavin McKenna is going, which is awesome. That's going to be fun to watch. I would love to see him and Roger play together. Kind of. Could be be the move. Yeah, would be bananas at international play. But uh, that kind of wraps up what we have to talk about today. We're skipping weekly picks because we don't even know know the schedule Saturday. Yeah. We don't know what's going on Saturday. Yeah, don't know what's going so. on, so we can't make weekly picks, but we will be releasing our playoff brackets here pretty quick of kind of our predictions of what's yeah. going on. Because, you know, we like to make picks, and we're wrong so often, except me because I'm always right. More often but, than not. Yeah, but that, I believe, is all the content we got. So, don't take it away. Are you sure you want don't want to try this again? Nope, or good. I'm just gonna me? like I might leave the meeting good. actually. I might just exit. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. All right. Episode number I keep forgetting. 15? 15. 15. 15. On Zoom, sadly this this place stuck. Eh, this place sucks. I'm not a big fan of the Zoom, but no, we're we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it over the summer. We're gonna we're gonna come back stronger than ever when we're back in person, but that is going to be it for episode number 15. Um, Berkeley Catton, what a beauty. Great dude. Um, we're up on all directories, Apple Music, Spotify. If you want to watch our cool graphics, like I've said every every week, or on YouTube as well, go follow us on socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We don't have Facebook because we don't get it. But – Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. That's going to be it for episode number 15. We appreciate you guys watching and or listening, and we'll catch you guys next week. Peace.